Welcome back to the show. Now, um, I move on to another interesting thing. If you're not aware, there's a new campus open in town. And um, Lancaster University just recently, I think this week, opened their first campus in West Africa. And the globally ranked uh, top 1% universities globally. It was recognized as an outstanding outfit for research, teaching, and student experience. Now, they launched their campus or they opened their campus on uh, Monday. And um, now we're finding out what exactly they have in store for Ghanaian students. Now, I have with me in studio um, two people from Lancaster University, Professor Bob Bowman, and he is part of the... He's a teacher? Are you going to be teaching with Lancaster? Uh, no, I, I used to be... Well, I still am a professor, and I used to teach in a former life, but I do management things Oh, now. management <laughs> at this point. And there's um, Chris Pilgrim, and he's the Senior Vice President, um, Transnational Education, Ghana Limited. So good morning to you both. Good morning to you. Good morning. So um, as I understand, we were speaking before we came on, you're actually quite... You're not new visitors to Ghana. You've been here so many times. Uh, yes. yes, well, we... Uh, Lancaster's in partnership with um, t &E. So Lancaster provides all the... Uh, curriculum and the academic management, T&E, mm -hmm. our partners and very good partners to mm -hmm. Lancaster provide all the infrastructure and the capital. <clears throat> and so we've both been coming to uh, Ghana on quite a number of occasions once we'd selected Ghana yes. as the chosen location. Because I was going to uh, ask, how many university. countries did you have in mind when you were selecting a campus for West Africa? Uh, well, as far as Lancaster is concerned, t, t and &E will have a slightly different story. Mm -hmm. As far as Lancaster is concerned, simply because we are one of the world's leading uh, universities, and we're of the view that leading universities now must take themselves to the world. They mustn't always expect the world to come okay. to them. Mm -hmm. uh, we were of the view that, uh, as far as sub-Saharan Africa was concerned, we couldn't truly claim to have a global footprint unless we had a major presence somewhere in sub-Saharan uh, Africa. And our favoured country, uh, TNE may have different views because um, they're, they're a different company, uh, our favoured uh, country by quite a long chalk, I would say, was Ghana. Was so, Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, we really wanted to be... In Ghana, so Ga that's Ghana good news for you're welcome at this point. Yeah. Yes, I know. I probably <laughs> said the right thing to you. <laughs> so, um, Chris, yeah. um, he, um, Professor Bowman was saying Ghana yeah. was a favorite choice, but yeah. what about TMI? Well, and I would agree with with uh, uh, Bob entirely. Mm -hmm. um, our organization uh, first entered into higher education in Dubai in mm -hmm. partnership with mm -hmm. an Australian university. But other than that, we have a, a strong presence in sub-Saharan Africa already. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have offices in Johannesburg, and, and we run from there uh, Forbes Africa and CNBC Africa. Oh, okay. We uh, have known for, for quite some time that we want to be in sub-Saharan Africa uh, with a campus, and we're actually looking at other locations as well after, after this one is firmly established. But we knew from the outset that West Africa was uh, indeed the best place for us to start. Mm -hmm. And once I became familiar with uh, you know the landscape in, in in this part of Africa, it was very obvious that Ghana was the place to start. Ghana was the place uh, to start. Yeah. So you've lo um, you've opened your new campus. Mm -hmm. um, it's um, Lancaster University. But could you just give us an overview of what kind? Is it a liberal arts college? Would you have some science based courses? No, what kind um, of well, courses? we. Uh, I mean, it, it takes quite some time to build up a world class university, and particularly to build up the reputation. Uh, of a world-class university, but that's the vision mm -hmm. for Lancaster University, um, uh, Ghana. So we've launched this year with, I think, quite an ambitious program for you know for a first year. Mm -hmm. And so we've got provision for eight undergraduate courses running from computer science through psychology and politics and international uh, relations, and then some business things, accounting and finance. Oh, law is, is, yes. is in there too. We'll also um, open uh, this year two postgraduate, two master's programs, mm. postgraduate uh, programs. But to use a Chinese uh, term, with every intention of developing this into a comprehensive yes. uh, university that will include the hard sciences, um, um, uh, um, uh, include the hard sciences yes. as well. Because I find it interesting that right now, globally, if you look around the world, it's first all these leading top colleges that people used to travel from their home countries mm -hmm. and exactly. go to are now coming to these areas that were once regarded as, you know, no-go areas like Africa, the mm -hmm. Middle East. Yeah. Why is that, Chris? If you could tell me, why has that focus yeah, now changed? 
Well, look, it's it's very simple for us, and and uh, uh, I think Bob had explained that uh, as part of their global strategy, it made sense for them, of course, in mm -hmm. fact, to be here. In mm -hmm. fact, you couldn't claim to be global unless you were here. And I think that's a very progressive move on the part of the university. Um, for us, there's a very simple proposition for the students. Uh, they can receive the same degree they would receive if they were to fly to Lancaster. Mm -hmm. uh, they can receive it here in Ghana, but at a much lower uh, cost to them. Uh, so what we're really doing is providing the... Already in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, there are 300,000 students that leave the country every year and study in another country. Yes. Uh, and for us, it just makes great sense to be able to provide that provision for them mm -hmm. in Ghana at home where they're surrounded in, you know, by familiar surroundings, they're with family, they have their support networks, and yes. they can do it at a much, much lower uh, cost to them yes, and their families. Yes, actually, that makes a lot yeah. of sense right now. Yeah. But in t looking at your courses, um, what have you done to tailor your courses to the Ghanaian environment? Because I know if you're teaching mm -hmm. sciences, uh -huh. and, you know, we also have um, agriculture as the basis of our economy, and all these other, you know, issues, mm -hmm. are you tailoring it? to fit with the uh, students' mindset? Uh, relatively little mm -hmm. would be the answer to that, and very deliberately. Uh, so so uh, I know it sounds awfully modest, but Lancaster truly is one of the world's leading uh, universities, and we cannot conceivably afford to allow our curriculum or our uh, assessment or our standards or our methods of teaching to be undermined at all. Mm -hmm. And so when Lancaster's gone overseas, it hasn't gone overseas with the view, oh, there's a degree you can get in Lancaster. Mm -hmm. And then there's a kind of a second class degree you can get, which is Lancaster University uh, um, overseas. Oh, and okay. so, so um, the, 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 the curriculum that the students would follow here, the means of assessment, the use of external examiners, the teaching styles, they're all identical to what the students would have received in England. And so it's crucial to us that they, the students get exactly the same degree certificate that they would have got. And, and that's what's going to be useful to them when they go on the job market. Okay. Uh, so employers will know they've got you know, a degree certificate from one of the world's leading universities. Mm -hmm. And it's the only degree certificate that university um, um, offers. So, there's be there's no compromise whatsoever on the on but the in terms of area. you know just mm -hmm. tweaking the curriculum a little mm -hmm. bit to suit students in Ghana because I, I do understand the importance of giving them that world class mm -hmm. education here that mm -hmm. makes their degree you okay. know competitive well, everywhere else. Well, the the I, I wouldn't call it a tweak mm -hmm. um, exactly. The one change we have made is that if if students were to come to England mm -hmm. to to do a degree program we'd require a level uh, entry for that. And it's a three-year program. Mm -hmm. What we're doing uh, here um, uh, with uh, t and &E, it's first, the first year mm -hmm. is a foundation year. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the students learn study skills and they can catch up on some areas and, you know, brush up the maths and this sort of um, uh, thing. And then at the start of the second year, of their second year, they would enter then the first year of the three-year Lancaster degree program. So there's this preparatory year, we call it a foundation okay. um, uh, uh, year. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Bob, if I just could add to that, um, and it's very important, and, and Bob said very clearly, the, the curriculum is identical to the, the outcomes that need to be achieved are identical to uh, those of the home campus. However, there is opportunity for, for us as a group to uh, to become familiar and build relationships with industry and government organizations and mm -hmm. non-government organizations mm -hmm. and uh, provide students with opportunity for yes. potentially summer internships. So there, there's definitely a Ghanaian relevance yes. in, in that regard. Uh, we uh, recognize and have, have um, you know, understood that sometimes there is a disconnect between what employers yes. are looking for yes. and, and what uh, uh, the skills that students have and so we want to work very hard on, on uh, trying to, to bridge that gap if we can but but in ways that are outside of the curriculum. Because mm -hmm. I that feel is, like yeah. especially students, the 300,000 students you mentioned that do travel and yeah. come back, mm -hmm. they want to contribute to so their societies but yeah. they find that the education they got in the West and in yeah. more advanced societies, when yeah. they come here applying it sometimes is, mm -hmm. there's st some challenges mm -hmm. because the situation, their environment mm -hmm. has changed. Mm -hmm. So in and tailoring your education in Lancaster, uh, in Ghana, mm -hmm. maybe the students should also have that mindset that you know it has to uh, fit 
within the environment. Well, the, the, I mean, in some ways, there will be better connect. The students that stay at, ho at home, of course, for the mm -hmm. degree, can be better connected than the ones that go um, that go overseas. And, and and as Chris said, we uh, we will work hard to you know develop uh, internships and mm -hmm. and then. You know, businesses come. Mm -hmm. You know, to visit mm -hmm. um, to visit the campus. So always a problem for us. With we have a huge number of international students in yes. uh, in Lancaster, several thousands mm -hmm. in fact, and and they always have a problem if they want a job back, back in home. the country of mm -hmm. origin. They don't have a problem getting a job in England. Yes, but that's because all the employers that would come to Lancaster, England, mm -hmm. you know, are multinational firms and large firms that have you know, their base in England. Yes. And so it's the students going back to India or Pakistan or China tend to be, it, it, it's harder for them and it's a problem we're working on. Yeah. But the students in Accra yeah. won't, won't have that problem yeah, there. Of course not. They're, they're in the right <laughs> water already. Yes, they are. So um, we yeah. know you recently <coughs> opened up uh, campus, <coughs> but um, if I may ask, when's the first day of class? When do you plan to start the program? It, it's, uh, it started, in fact, the, we, we had a formal uh, okay. Inauguration, oh. cutting of ribbons and all this sort of um, birthday cakes and all this sort of <laughs> thing uh, on Monday, but the classes started at the beginning of October. So oh. we've had the first small intake, yes. and then there'll be another intake into the foundation year in January. Mm -hmm. How how does it work? Um, students will start. You have two batches coming in at once. That's or? right. We would have students starting at the at the uh, foundation level mm -hmm. anyway in. Uh, in the autumn of each year, and then again in January, okay. and, and we're looking at the possibility uh, of, of um, sorry, no, it would be just those into uh, two intakes, two and then intakes. we will begin with the postgraduate courses that. that Not to interrupt, but Chris, you said autumn. For those here, yeah. we, it's always summer here. <laughs> it's always yeah. summer here. So for those <laughs> who are not why aware I might move of, here. <laughs> yes, of autumn, that starts in October or something. Yeah, in October okay. of each year, and then uh, and then one in January, mm -hmm. and then the the. Uh, Postgraduate provision would be starting uh, sometime in in the next year. Okay, great. So students who are interested, mm -hmm. they want to get because like uh, if you're thinking of going outside for an education, you have to factor in travel costs, yes. living arrangements, yes. all of that. But if people want to come here, um, mm -hmm. what exactly can they do to apply to Lancaster University? What to apply to Lancaster University in, in Accra? In in, in Accra, mm -hmm. well, there's. Um, um, there's an admissions uh, office. Yeah. You'll know more yeah, about absolutely. this. Absolutely, <laughs> it's just a matter of contacting us. Chris is the man to talk to. <laughs> Listen, uh, we we have a web presence, uh, so certainly visit us there. Um, our campus is in East Legon mm -hmm. on Jungle Road, and we would uh, more than welcome uh, um, anyone to visit at any time. We have admissions representatives who are are basically there waiting for uh, you know you to come in the door and they'll show you the Lancaster way or to uh, contact us by email or mm -hmm. by phone. Yes, because if anything, I, I would admit that I was trained abroad, and one thing that I felt was very beneficial was career counseling, yes. which yeah. I feel like some local yeah. you know institutions yeah. may not have necessarily. Yeah. So yes. I feel like whenever I hear of a global institution coming mm -hmm. in, it's yeah. really important to have that mm -hmm. career counseling because yeah. we also do have this problem of unemployment because yes. we have a lot of graduates yeah. coming out yeah. of school and yeah. they don't exactly know how to apply yeah. their yeah. degree because yeah. industry is just one particular yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. So how would yeah. you be also tailoring your students to, Look, uh, you know, Success work? for us is, is really a direct function of success of the student yes. or success of the graduate. Mm -hmm. And that means meaningful mm -hmm. employment after mm -hmm. university. And so we recognize the importance of that. We have, uh, of course, in the in the early early stages, uh, we don't yet have a career services uh, function or department, but we mm -hmm. have every intention of building that in, such that um, they're there to work with students long before they graduate mm -hmm. uh, to help them with exactly what you're talking about, having uh, you know the proper techniques and skills for searching for jobs. But more importantly, and I mentioned it earlier, is the ties that we will form with industry or with governments or with other agencies um, will work very hard with them so that they understand the qualities yes. uh, and, and uh, characteristics of the students that mm -hmm. we will be graduating. So yes. yes, we recognize that as being uh, integral to our success. And, and I think we'll bringing out global, you know, mm -hmm. minded students will also yes. get yep. industry on their toes. Because if you have yeah. a certain class of graduate mm -hmm. coming out there, you uh, have to give mm -hmm. them the job they also deserve yeah. or match mm -hmm. up with. Mm -hmm. But um, I also wanted to find out when you say affordable, that's what yes. I'm like. Yeah. Affordable for Lancaster University in Accra. Are you looking yeah. at a package where people can also get scholarship? Is there aid options for students? Uh, well, there, there certainly are 
uh, scholarships. Um, one of the things that would uh, unite students across the world, as mm -hmm. you probably know, is everybody wants uh, a scholarship, yes. and then, of course, we'd, we'd all be bankrupt and <laughs> we'd be able to pay our, our rent and pay our, um, pay our teachers. Uh, but it's, it's a matter of uh, principle with uh, Lancaster that we would have a scholarship program. Mm -hmm. It's also the case with the T&E, it's mm -hmm. a matter of principle um, uh, with them. And T&E as, as a corporation is strongly committed to uh, doing all sorts of things towards the, the social good. So um, there are scholarships, there will be more scholarships as the university 